Retrotech have been staying safe whilst hard at work, putting the funds from Operation Jericho 2020 to good use. All the wood required to complete Malde has been delivered to the factory. The team have been preparing the next series of infields on the mould itself. First, unloaded into the dock, is the delivery of 18mm plywood. A modular system has been created for ease of construction and repeatability. The sheets are cut into strips at a predetermined width that progressively decrease in size as they are stacked. These ply infills are then layered and assembled to create an inner support structure. The ends of the strips are cut to an angle to match the curve of the fuselage. The strips are measured to the correct position and secured with a G-clamp. The ply is then screwed to the upright. This is repeated again. And again. And again. After that, we received the lengths of Jalutong hardwood. Jalutong, or Diera costulata, is a species of tree that grows in Southeast Asia. Jalutong growth is encouraged by environment programs such as the United Nations as a more environmentally sustainable alternative to palm oil plantations and to promote reforestation. The wood has many properties similar to balsa, such as the low density, straight grain and fine texture. This means that the wood is easy to work with and hence is popular with model makers, pattern makers as well as our team. The bays between the uprights are measured to an approximate. The blocks are usually cut off using a circular saw. Next, we need to mould the block so it fits into the section. A sliding bevel is used to take the angle between the block below and the plywood inner support structure. The angle is then marked on the block that has already been cut to size. Then the corner is sanded off. The block is slotted into place, then the arc is marked with a line. The excess is taken off using the bandsaw. The waist side is marked, then trimmed at a slight angle to resemble the curve of the fuselage. The bandsaw cuts are then smoothed using the disc sander.
Then it is slotted into place. Ta-da! Holes are drilled into the corners of the block to secure them. A countersink drill bit is then used to create a seat for the screw head. Screws are then driven through the holes into the inner support structure. This is so they can be removed or replaced when necessary. We then need to shape the mould to a finer detail. At this stage of the project, we use a hand plane. To prepare the blade, it is sharpened on an oil stone. The bevel edge of the blade is honed to create a sharp edge. The blade is then flipped over to remove the burr from the back face. After this, a leather strop is used to get a razor sharp edge. If it is done correctly, you can even shave your own arm. The blade is fitted back onto the plane. And then the cutting depth of the iron is adjusted. As you can see, it's a full body workout, so after an exhaustive day's planing, it's time for a nap. Even after all this effort, there is yet more plotting, gluing, screwing and sanding to do to this part of the mould, as well as the other frames. Behind the scenes, other members of the team have been heavily researching drawings for the future aspects of the fuselage build. We hope to reveal what they've been up to next time. We would love to hear what you have to say and let us know about any things you would like to see more of. Check out our website to learn more about what we're up to and how you can help return this wooden wonder to the skies above Britain. We hope you enjoyed this video and that you're staying safe wherever you are. Thank you for watching.